Hello! Welcome to The Monitor, and more importantly, welcome to 2013. If you still have the occasion to write checks, remember the three instead of the two, but that is not why we're here, nor are we here to talk about the pop culture releases of the first week of January, because there's not really a lot that comes out the first week in January, unless it is a baby that was conceived in March or April. Instead, we're going to talk about The Monitor's 10 favorite things from 2012 in no particular order. I just wrote them down as I thought about them, and that's how we're going to present them to you. First, Scott Snyder fantastic run on Batman as part of DC Comics New 52. It was a conclusion of the incredible Court of Owls storyline and the beginning of the Death of the Family storyline, which of course marked the return of Joker and his torn off face held in place with power staples. Good stuff. Looper, Ryan Johnson's sci-fi yarn about a hitman who has to kill himself but does not, and then they chase each other all around the town. It is a sci-fi movie that turns into a Western with Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt as a younger Bruce Willis and Emily Blunt and Jeff Daniels and one of the best child actors I have ever seen. Borderlands 2, Gearbox Software sequel to Borderlands, yeah, that's right, you guessed right. It is a first-person shooter slash role-playing game hybrid in which you play any one of a handful of classes and you can level them up and there are basically infinite uh, numbers of guns in the world. You find them, you buy them, you sell them, they all do different things. I like to set enemies on fire. You might like to just corrode them with acid. Whatever type of havoc you like to wreak, Borderlands 2 lets you do it. Kendrick Lamar's album, Good Kid, Mad City. It's his third official album, but his first major label album. This, of course, comes out on Interscope Aftermath after he was signed by Dr. Dre following the incredible 2011 album, Section 80. And he brings it. I've talked about this before, but Kendrick Lamar is possibly the most talented young rapper working today. Dark Knight Rises. Christopher Nolan wraps up his trilogy in grand Sturm und Drang fashion. The other good side is we never have to hear Christian Bale's tortured, gravelly Batman voice again. Still, the movie was awesome. The whole thing just kind of kicked ass. I could say that, right? Ass. Ass. Hawkeye, Matt Fraction's take for Marvel Comics on the non-superpowered Avengers member. Doesn't sound like a lot, right? But the writing is absolutely hilarious. Really love this run. He started it uh, in August and it is going strong. I implore you to pick that up. Hawkeye on Marvel, not part of Marvel now, just a standalone thing from the inimitable Matt Fraction. Homeland. Oh my god! Season 2 of Homeland! You thought that it couldn't get crazier than Season 1. Guess what? You're wrong, because it did. Abu Nazir, Nicholas Brody, Carrie Mathis, and David Estes. Uh, Saul, I almost forgot Manny Patinkin's character's name. Saul. It is just one of the best acted, most crazy written. I'm not going to say it's the best written because some people had some issues with the way it went in the last three episodes or so. I didn't. you got to suspend some disbelief, people. If you're going to believe that a POW comes back and is able to orchestrate an assassination attempt on the vice president, then you got to believe anything. Frank Ocean, Channel Orange, the R&B singer who put out an incredible free album last year, the Nostalgia Ultra and Peripheral Odd Future member came out with his major label debut and it is as power-packed and soulful and preternaturally self-assured as you hoped it would be. Certainly hands down one of my favorite albums of the year and definitely worth a listen if you haven't listened to it yet. Sons of Anarchy on FX. Oh, Sam Crow is back. Sons of Anarchy, Motorcycle Club, Redwood Originals. Kurt Sutter's crazy band of motorcycle misfits in Northern California just was wall-to-wall -wall batshit this year. Jimmy Smith was incredible. Every character kind of got to show their strong suits. Even Harold Perrineau, who I don't really like, turned in a good performance as crime lord Damon Pope. There's a lot left to, uh, to see how it pans out. Next season, a lot of questions, a lot of cliffhangers, as they always like to do. But for me, it was the most satisfying season of Sons of Anarchy since season two. Definitely worth going back to if you haven't. Fez, the independent video game brought to you by visionary Phil Fish. You may have seen this as the subject of the documentary indie game, The Movie. Uh, Fez was downloadable title for Xbox 360 earlier in the year. It is really graphically simple, but conceptually just unbelievably complex. It involves rotating parts of the landscape around the Z-axis that you never really think about. So it is a 2D game that takes on a 3D feel. There are more Easter eggs built into this thing than, I don't know, April on the White House lawn. 
It is just, there is cryptography and QR codes and, and illusions and, and just, it is, there is so much to unpack that if you've played it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, oh God, you have to play this game. Fez from Phil Fish, nice work. So that is it for 2012 on The Monitor. We will be back next week to start talking about 2013 pop culture releases, but until then, we've got a long list of honorable mentions that did not we did not have room for in this list, so I want to give shouts to Argo, Ben Affleck killing it as usual, Aesop Rock, How to Dress Well's second album, Safety Not Guaranteed, Mark Duplass and Aubrey Plaza in a small little genre movie. Speaking of small little genre movies, Chronicle, great little superhero sci-fi tale that was presented with a great deal of polish, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples' sci-fi fantasy comic series on Image called Saga. Speaking of Image, you also had Jonathan Hickman's Manhattan Chronicles, a great alternate history retelling of the Atomic Age and the Cold War. You also had Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips coming together to do noir all over again on Image with Fatal. You've got The Avengers. Can't forget The Avengers. And I think that's it. So we'll see you next week.